Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, time for the biggest ship. Let's see what sort of biggest hull we can create and have a one-on-one -on -one duel with another battleship. This is to make sure I don't have to worry about the current state of the formation system and I'm just looking to do a bit of one-on-one -on -one battle to see how well the AI can design ships and if they design terrible ships, we're gonna have a few rounds. I have turned Unlock All on to make sure that I have all the hulls available, but that does lead to this uh, large carousel of hulls. Now, the first definition uh, that we need to set is what exactly is biggest? Does that mean displacement, or are we talking about the length of the ship? Unfortunately, <laughs> with this many ships in the carousel, it is very difficult to figure out exactly what length it is, because that is overwritten by the carousel itself. Anyway, I think the Super Battleship 2 is the longest that you can get. This has to be the biggest ship. Uh, it is 1155 feet. What is that in normal metrics? I mean, in, uh, in the metric system. This gives us a ship of 352 meters. Is that it? That's actually not as big as I thought. Now... That's definitely smaller, the King George class, but with, yeah, 260 meters, 109,000 tons, 125,000 tons. We have another competitor here. And this ship, 363 meters. Not bad, 99,000 tons, I think it's downhill from here. Despite having unlock all on, there are not that many hulls which are going all the way up to 130,000 tons. Yeah, that's going to get progressively worse from here. Hold on, this modernized dreadnought goes to 90,000 tons? That's a big boy. How big, how big is that? 279 meters. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, our first one was 324, max it out... 352. So, interestingly, it is, I think, this hull that is the longest. But, does not have the most displacement. So this one, hold on, 324, 125,000, this one. Yeah, that was the one. So, 125,000 tons, 363 meters. Um, interestingly, that means that we're going to have a longer ship, but with less displacement, it's going to be slightly smaller ship, slightly less wide. Um, when it comes to hull form, this is going to be important. This thing has a hull form of 80, 88 stability. This thing has a 94 stability. The more stability you have, the more accurate your guns will be. So let's go with the Prince George in its largest formation. It's not going to be as long as the other one, but still a hell of a ship. All right, let's go back to the inches because that's what I'm used to when it comes to dealing with armor. Now then, we need to fit a secondary tower on here as well. <coughs> let's see, this is the advanced tower with funnel, 32 long range accuracy, that's a lot. Look at the difference here, plus eight, plus six, plus 32. Good grief. Interestingly, it is far less wide than the main tower. This is the modern tower 4. 50 long range accuracy. Which is actually not as good as I'd expected. I thought we were going to get a bit more of a bonus, but hey, doesn't matter. Now, let's armor this thing up. Anti-torpedo blister is not going to be terribly important in the battle like this. We're going to go for an all or nothing armor scheme... Reinforced bulkheads, maximum bulkheads, range is no factor here. Let's say I want to do 30 knots. In case the enemy is particularly quick, I can keep up. Diesel engines put me at 88,000 tons. If I go for gear turbines, it's 92,000 tons. They really did give the diesels a buff lately. Um, improved propeller shaft. And especially the auxiliary engine is useful to ensure that water pumping goes faster and all ship repairs are sped up. So, this thing is going to be burning oil. 
not too much of a difference. You're getting a little bit less displacement, but you're paying 6 million more for that. Then again, we're building a big battleship. It doesn't matter that much. Now we're going to go for the full Monty here. 20 inch guns. Let's go for the quadruples. I haven't used those in a while. Um, you're always going to have to try and figure out a balance between having these huge turrets and having an armor scheme. And it's not always easy to try and get the right balance. Let's see, can I push this thing slightly farther forward? I can have this thing forward. And put this turret on here. And yeah, there we go. Shift this thing forward. This thing to here. And this thing to here. 117,000 out of 130,000 tons used. Uber funnel over there. Might actually be way too much for what I need. No, it's not even enough. Whoa, considering the engine efficiency here. If I were to go for gear turbines, oh, you're getting, <clears throat> you're getting a few tons more displacement. Okay, so we're gonna have to go with two large funnels. Two Uber Funnel 5s. I still find it a bit curious. Uh, this ship is flying a British flag. And with unlock on all... Uh, sorry, unlock all on. You are, of course, getting a whole lot more components than you normally would. But it's still a bit weird to have a British ship with Uber Funnels. Anyway. Um, this is very quickly going to ramp up whatever we have left. Exactly. Let's have the standard turrets. We have one empty barbette, and the game doesn't like that. I think that's this one. Can we have another overlooking... There we go. <clears throat> yes, we can have another overlooking turret at the expense of weight. Although it's not fully overlooking, actually. In that case, I'm just going to put a single 9-inch gun there. So as to satisfy the game's uh, desire to have at least one turret there. And not to have too much weight there. Shift this back. Aft weight of set 0.1. I'm going to have to slow her down a little bit. Because I don't feel too confident about not going into battle with barbette armor. Or about going into battle without barbette armor. Reduce anti torpedo protection. Uh, high TNT propellant. Super heavy shells. Because 20 inch guns generally don't hit hard enough. No, they really do. Now, this thing is definitely made for long-range slugging fights. That means that deck armor is going to be potentially more important than belt armor. But good luck trying to figure this out. Because a 9-inch deck armor plus 118%, so let's round that down to 18 inches of armor. Um, 18 inches of armor, belt, oh, sorry, deck armor um, is never going to be enough. Because if I want to stay at around 20,000 meters, I need 25 inches of deck armor or equivalent. So this is <laughs> going to be all sorts of problems. Uh, and of course, I have zero secondary battery. But for what I have in mind with this ship, I don't really need that. It's a one-on-one -on -one battleship brawl. It's not like I have to take out a ton of smaller ships. Let's armor up the secondary... Sorry, the conning tower a little bit more. Ensuring that if this thing takes a hit, it doesn't immediately get blown off and we start to reduce accuracy. Secondaries doesn't matter. Whether I put 6 or 60 in there doesn't matter because I simply don't have any. And that's too heavy. Well, 14 inches of belt armor. <laughs> this is going to be the test to see if this boost that I get from the long-range accuracy or to the long-range accuracy from the advanced tower is going to work. So, here goes the Prince George, up against another battleship. Let's see what the Chinese have prepared for us here. The Chinese get something that is, um, at least budget-wise, it should be fairly comparable. But it doesn't look that, that impressive. This thing only has, <laughs> only, has six 18-inch guns. Is that really it? Alright, let's have the George turn to port. 
6% accuracy at that range? That's 25 kilometers out? That is really impressive. Really impressive. She's about rearing and ready to go. Hold for a second. Fire. Apologies to headphone users for not giving you a fair warning, but, well, I did say that she was ready to fire. I wonder how many salvos we need, at least to hit, to get a good couple of, uh, well, I think deck pens at this range. Let's slow the ship down. <clears throat> I believe that we still get an accuracy bonus from that. Eight and a half percent. Eight, seven. Yeah, I just took a hit, but it dinged off. Oh, good grief. Look at that. Three hits. Mid deck, bow deck, bow belt. And that immediately reduced the ship to, I think, 60%-ish. <sighs> that was bad. That was 320-inch super heavy shells doing a lot of damage. And this is a, exactly what I'm always trying to uh, concern myself with when I build ships which are more, let's say, sniper builds. Um, you need to have a lot of deck armor, and you just cannot armor up against something that fires 20-inch at you. Especially if they're super heavy shells. On top of that, I think that they might not have all the tech that they could get. In the sense that these ships... Well... I know that the Chinese have a, a fairly large hull. I think you're looking at it. But they should have used more guns. They should have made the hull bigger. And last time I checked, the AI tries to make a ship that's as big as yours. And therefore uses almost as much budget, if they can. But this thing is not nearly as big. And unfortunately, I think it'll be dead by the time I get an identification on her. She's already starting to list to starboard. Two engines are down. Her quarter deck is underwater. One or two good hits. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter where I hit her at this point, and she could be dead. Here comes the salvo. Flooding. I think that ought to do it. I took two hits. And I didn't take a single scrap of damage. So that was a Chinese... Well, um, it was a battleship, all right. But it wasn't that strong, was it? Let's try again. All right, new round against the Chinese. What sort of a battleship are we looking at this time? 15 13-inch guns. Right. That's not going to go down well. This is a modernized dreadnought. I'm going to set up a new type of battle, this time against Japan, because the Japanese have a really large hull available. I think I might actually be using the Japanese hull with my ship. So I'll be right back, and then we can have a look at, uh, well, what another nation is going to throw together. A little while later, a new contestant has arrived. This is a beauty of a ship by the Japanese. Um, it is, I think, an, a modernized dreadnought. It's a really long ship. It still doesn't really compete for the biggest insofar as displacement goes. Because it's not that Super Battleship 2. 15, 15 inch guns. Very potent. Older funnels. Um, main and secondary tower very close together. I like the look of that main tower. That, I think Pagoda-ish tower. Unfortunately, I'm concerned that the Britannia new variant of this ship, because I had to start over, um, is not really going to take too kindly to her. Those 15-inch guns might be impressive, but they don't really hold a candle to my 20-inch guns. And I have one more barrel on top of that. Now this ship <laughs> is so low confident that they can uh, do damage to me, that they immediately started shelling me with high explosive. Whereas my ship does not really have the same propensity and thinks, you know what, I can do damage and I will. 
And thus two high explo no, two armor piercing shells, two eighty two and one seventy six, slam into the the modernized dreadnought and start wrecking up the damage. I was really hoping for a bit more of a fair fight. Like the Japanese could bring a super battleship hull, but they're just not doing it. Oh, I hit the main tower with an overpen. Interesting. Okay, turn the main guns off. I want to fire a full high explosive salvo. Just to see what that does against that ship. Just to see if it's going to be useful or not. Fire when ready. Close fire. Here comes the pain. Possibly. I'm not sure how much damage is going to be. There are 20 inch heavy shell or super heavy shells. They might start a few fires, but outside of those fire starting capabilities, we are still firing at a, a dreadnought. So the chances of me inflicting a ton of damage are not that great. Oh, sorry, she has 18. Oh. Okay. Uh, she has 18 15 inch guns, not 15. Now we did, with a high explosive shell, of all things, get a bow deck extended pen for 484. Surprisingly so, this ship is still not budging. She's not flooding. So, despite my best intentions, or worst intentions towards this ship... Nope. Alright, back to armor piercing. Even though ricochet... Oh, it shouldn't be too bad. Shells out, and... Misses. Come on, give me an opponent that's worthy of the Britannia. Because it feels like I'm just clubbing seals here. I need a worthy challenger. Something that shoots back in kind. There, destroy the main gun. You're lucky that you didn't get a flash fire. Ship that big? That many explosives on board could very easily, spontaneously combust. Fire and flooding. I think a shell just ricocheted off the port side. I have taken seven hits for 36. I have done nine hits for 36. Oh, sorry, 1362 damage. I think it's the angle that's currently keeping this thing safe. And yeah, there we go. We need something bigger to shoot at. The Japanese said, you want bigger? I'll give you bigger. I'm gonna bring 21 inch, or sorry, 21 15 inch barrels. But it's still that older Dreadnought design. Where are my super battleships? Come on, make an effort. Finally, after several tries, a slightly more worthy competitor has shown up. This ship, as of yet unidentified, is packing a very neat hull. Uh, Nelson-esque design, in the sense that she has three bow turrets and one stern, but they're all 17-inch guns. Now we're getting somewhere. It's better than those 15-inch uh, small-ish poppers that the <laughs> previous battleships were using. I'm curious to see what sort of price tag this thing has, but again, you're gonna have to wait until I get it fully identified. Which, if the Britannia's 20-inch guns have anything to say about it, is not going to happen. We're going to blow that thing out of the water before it becomes too much of a threat. I always find the Nelson designs curious. Um, depending on how you have your turret set up and how you angle your ship, you can make it work. If you are pointing directly straight forward, you're not going to be using that third turret. Uh, but at a slight angle, like this ship is doing... It's even bringing the stern turret to bear, although not fully, I think. This way, at least you can get more firepower out of your ship. Ah, partial pen. Mid-belt. This thing might actually try and hold the candles to the Britannia. This is another one of those reinforcement of beliefs of Britannia rule the waves. She is coming a bit closer. I think I need to be turning away a bit more to ensure that I can still snipe. Before testing the armor on the Britannia. Because that's not great. Hmm. Something else that I noticed about this ship. It opened fire before I could see it. So their detection is better than mine. 
So far, I've only scored two hits for 50 points. Interesting. They scored one hit. Mid belt. Partial pen. That's what you get with a 17 inch you're firing back at you. It does more damage. Give me high explosive salvo. Considering the angle, I wouldn't be surprised if stuff's gonna bounce off. Let's see. We have hit them a few times, but only two of those were effective. Interesting. First high explosive salvo missed. Finally somebody's done some damage to the Britannia. Now, if the Britannia was facing destroyers, especially Lord, well, let's say a larger swarm of destroyers, she could be fairly easily overcome. Because the Britannia is absolutely devoid of any secondary guns. She doesn't have any way of dealing with smaller ships. Um, by the way, relative to the previous ship, I have replaced the 9-inch turret over there with a 2-inch secondary. To ensure that I have at least a secondary gun, or at least, uh, that I have a turret on there. And that satisfied the barbette requirement. 70%, we might actually get an ideal in this guy. Now my ship is going to cost 307.6 million to build. What do we have here? Just cracking their armor with high explosive. 80%. Stern deck extended. Pen. Still, 97% structural. But, to their credit, they are doing damage. I really wonder if the campaign is going to be allowing to build something this big. And if it is, then I would want the campaign to also go, okay, if you're going to build something that big... It's going to take you, A, forever to build, and B, it's going to completely deprive you of any other budgetary stuff. You're not going to be able to build a fleet of support ships for it. So if you're going to go with one hero unit, if you will, go ahead. You can do it, but at the expense of the rest of your fleet. Uh, the Chitin, 98... <laughs> that's not even a third. Seriously, that's not even a third. She is very slow. Fairly heavily armored, many bulkheads, 17 inch guns, slinging high TNT, and these are. they're light shells? Ugh. Fine. Could have been better. This ship could have been better. Alright, last attempt. And it seems like we have something that has the same caliber of guns. This beauty of a ship, and I really mean that, this looks gorgeous. It has 20 inch guns, but only 6 barrels. You can see that she has a secondary armament even sitting very close to the side of the ship. The tower is filled to the brim with secondaries, and she has another 2 20 inch barrels off her stern. Now, is that going to be enough to sink me? If it's up to me, no. But I really wonder if I'm actually going to take some damage. I mean, some serious damage, as opposed to the, well, the pitiful bit of damage that the other ship did. It seems like we're actually getting somewhere. There, we're not getting a, an instant large hit, because we're overpenning. Oh, dear. And she didn't have many turrets to begin with. Flash fire. It strikes when you least expect it. I was able to pen mid-deck, and I think that was right under the turrets. Mid-deck, yeah. If I'm not mistaken... No. I think it's going to be hard to see. Because what happened here, you're looking at the top side of a crater of the whole turret. Or at least the animation that Dreadnought has for it. Which looks spectacular. Just imagine the forces in play here. Causing this much damage to a ship. And with a flash fire, I'm actually interested to see if the gunners in those other turrets survived. Uh, since this is a game, the answer is going to be yes. In real life, I think they would be toast. 
properly scorched. Because they simply got <laughs> literally very close to the fire. Oh. <laughs> this thing cannot catch a break. Uh, first it got a flash fire and now it had an ammo detonation. It's still moving. It's still shooting. But it's going around with a damaged rudder and a damaged engine. So it seems that no matter what I try, I just cannot find a worthy competitor for the Britannia. Which does kind of lead me to believe that a ship like this could work in the campaign. Yes, it would be ludicrously expensive. It would take forever to build. But once you have it fielded, if you still have a navy left at that point, uh, if you haven't been defeated, and again, I don't know much about the campaign, short of what I'm guessing and hoping for. Um, if you still have a navy left and this thing enters the field, well, you're going to be capable of inflicting a ton of damage at range, which means that you might not even need a whole lot of escort ships. Because you can just punch a couple of holes in them, sink the larger ships, and then disengage. And eventually the enemy's going to be left with destroyers and such. Another couple of good hits. She has done 26 damage. I have done 5,500. Oh, sorry, 4,500. Getting the AI to build a ship that's capable of taking on just a large 20-inch gun battleship. It's hard to find. Which is sad, because I want a good competitor. And they're just... You know... They're not building the type of ship that I would like. 99. So this thing is at least almost double as expensive as the previous one. They're looking to get quite a lot of displacement out of what I think is a 130,000 ton hull. They even brought torpedo tubes on this thing. Not that that would have helped. And their 20-inch guns, they are firing heavy shells, very good, with cordite, so you get a bit more pen, I think. Ah, uh, but there we go. The shortcomings of this ship are in its rangefinding ability. They have a terrible rangefinder, a stereoscopic 2, and they have a generation 1 radar. Contrast that to my tier 5 stereoscopic rangefinder and tier 2 generation 2 radar. I'm not surprised that their accuracy is terrible. 2.4% versus my 11. And on top of that, of course, they're suffering from all sorts of damage and stability and penalties to... No, not yet to, to main tower. Anyway, trying to get a ship... <laughs> trying to get a ship to actually take on one of the biggest ships that you can build, if not the biggest ship, is hard. At least I couldn't get it done. If you can, let me know down below in the comments. And of course, I'm interested to see what your thoughts are on how a ship like this would happen in the campaign. What do you think you'd have to sacrifice for it? What sort of ships would you or would you not be able to buy if you brought something like this? Let me know. Uh, the campaign isn't out yet. We're still in Alpha 12. But we might as well do a little bit of guessing and hoping for what could be. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the battles. And I'll see you guys soon for another video.